Hey guys, Fuzzy and Up here again. Um, this is part two of the uh, simple exploitation series. I don't know. I don't know what I'm calling it yet. Um, anyways, so picking up where the last one left off, we uh, compiled this uh, simple program. Um, you should refer to video one if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, as I promised, we're going to open it in GDB. Um, so all we do is uh, type GDB and then type it as if we were running the program. So now GDB is open. Um, one thing that I always like to do is uh, change the disassembly syntax to Intel base. So that's just set disassembly dash flavor and Intel. Just makes it easier to read. Um, so one of the things by, by, by supplying that dash GGDB switch, uh, we're able to type list and see the source code. We're also able to set breakpoints at um, the lines of source code. So um, if this is like your first ever exposure to buffer overflows, you might still not quite understand uh, what's about to happen, but um, if you're a bit familiar, uh, you're aware that I'm going to supply more than 10 characters and that's going to crash this program. We're going to use it to uh, take control and make it do whatever we want. But first, I want to illustrate something, uh, well, two things, really important. Um, one is that just exceeding the buffer does not make the program crash in itself. And I want to show you exactly when and why the program crashes. Um, this was something that took me uh, a little while to get at first. So maybe some of you are struggling with this, and it will help you as well. So... The first thing, we're going to just run it in GDB and see if the program crashes or not. Um, at first, uh, I'm going to use Perl for this. This syntax, you can just copy it down. You don't need to really worry about learning Perl. This is all the Perl you'll really ever need to know. And I'm, it'll make it easier to, to pick how many A's we want to supply. So I'm going to start off with 10 A's just to prove that everything works. So, there we go. Program exited normally. We see the output right here. Okay? So, what if we supply 15 A's? We already know that the buffer is only 10 characters. So, some of you might expect the program to, uh, to crash because we exceeded the buffer. However, if you watch this, it works just fine. It even prints all 15 A's out. Okay, and then it exits normally, it doesn't crash. So, we, we have a buffer overflow. We overwrote past the buffer. You know, we wrote 15 into a 10 character buffer. But why didn't the program crash? Why isn't that an exploit? We'll see. How about 20? Is 20 enough? See, 20 works too, actually. So, um, as you can see, we've now doubled what the buffer uh, should have been but um, the program still didn't crash. Um, it's actually going to take, I think, 32 to make this program crash. There we go. Now you see, once I supplied 32 A's, we overwrote the buffer enough to make it crash, and you can see here that it crashed by trying to execute 41414141. That is uh, AA, AA, okay? Those are, um, you should know that, come on. Okay. So, why did that happen? Why didn't it uh, crash when we just overflowed by uh, a little bit? Okay, so right now we're going to take a look at the stack. And we're going to do that by examining, say, 20 hex words from stack pointer. Okay. And really we should do this earlier in the program. Okay, so... Let's put a breakpoint right before uh, the string copy, or right after the string, right before and right after. So we'll break on line 8, and we'll break on line 9. Okay, so we'll run the program again. 32, actually let's run it with just, yeah let's run it with 32 A's, why not? Okay, so here we are, breakpoint is right before the string copy is about to be executed. 
if we take a look at the stack, uh, I don't know, it doesn't really make much sense, things look fine. Uh, let's not worry about it for now. Let's continue. String copy happens. Now we take a look at the stack again, and we can see these 4141414141 written on the stack here. Okay. Now, the initial the initial buffer was 10 characters, so it should have been able to write here, to write here, and to write a little bit uh, into here. Okay. Soon as we started the, with the buffer overflow, we started to overwrite here into memory. We overwrote here, we overwrote here, we overwrote here, we overwrote all the way to here. Now, just writing here didn't crash the program. So the reason is, okay, crashing the program uh, requires overwriting EIP so that it tries to execute uh, what we've written, okay? EIP is stored on the stack, but so are other things, um, like environmental variables, other local variables. Um, the saved EBP from before is uh, would have been here. Uh, if we look at the registers, that should... Uh, work as well. And uh, okay, don't worry about it. Anyways, EIP being overwritten was here. So it took it took all these extra ones past the buffer to actually reach EIP and overwrite it. Okay, um, that's probably long enough for this video. Um, I want to keep all these pretty short. Uh, so we'll pick up where we left off in the next video. Okay, thanks guys.